Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fallout Roundtable. This is a place where diverse individuals discuss various topics from the Fallout universe. Join us, the conversation has already started. Welcome to the Fallout Roundtable. My name is Maverick Stone. Today is a very special day and episode whenever this comes out. Today we we have, again, Jaxus and Sassy Lady of the Normal Crew. But today we have two special guests. Not just one, but two special guests. Again, returning, it's Dot. Hello. And very first time, my flesh and blood is here. Which is weird to say. But it's here's weird my... hearing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's my uh, it's my younger sister uh, Emma. Say hello, hello, everybody. Who oh, give hello. up for baby sis Emma? <laughs> yeah, yes, I am. I am older by like fourteen months. Nineteen, nineteen, nineteen. <laughs> you were almost <laughs> Irish twins. Am I the only one that there... thought he sounded like the count a minute there? One, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. Right, exactly. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Not just one, but two. Ah, ah, ah. ah. Yeah, I was like, hmm. Sorry, Mystery I, was trying, I, I was I was trying something. I was going for something. And it, and it sort of clicked, but it didn't at the same time. That's just me when it comes to, to this show. It clicks, but it doesn't. Well, anyway. Anyway, if you like what you what you're listening, or or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, please rate, review, and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, our Spotify. Give us uh, them five stars uh, on Apple Podcast. Why don't you just leave us a review? Five stars and a review. Follow us on Twitter at FollowRTB. And if you want to send us an email, send it to follow rtb at gmail.com we will respond to your emails we are going to talk about settlements today today i gave the rest the rest of the people including our special guests a prompt pretty much pick basically pick a place any place uh and uh we're going to create settlements about so what you're saying is they can pick a place anywhere in the world and which one of those the locations with throughout the entire world would you pick as a location for your own settlement? And how would you set yeah. it up? Yeah, how, how, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Do, you, do you want it for anywhere in the world, considering that we don't know what happens outside of the U.S.? I, I'm going to leave. Cool? I'm, I'm, the, I'm cool with that. As long okay. as it's not, it's not the state of Hawaii. Huh? <laughs> Listen, Why just at, just at me next time, okay? <laughs> there, there, there's a whole different backstory and a story about this before this okay. that I will go I into say, at a later date. Literally, Hawaii is the U.S. So, in case you hadn't figured that, part I, out. I know that, but but I was but th- there's we a had a nice I'll, long I'll, I'll sibling discussion about the fact that I should choose a city and not a whole state. Okay, so I, I so Honolulu. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Well, that's I could what say, I like, was saying. I could choose one that's of like the smaller saying. islands, right? Like, yeah, well, Hawaii's made of multiple islands. If you really don't want me to choose a whole state, I can choose one of the smaller islands. And I is feel it like one that- of the islands that nobody has actually stepped on in years because it's supposedly highly protected? Even the government protects it, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they have like their own language they and everything. Have everything. If the government owns it, they probably got everything already. So that'd be a good place. Mm-hmm. But but we anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we already yeah, settled but, it. Uh, yeah, we settled it. We settled this argument. It's great. All right, kids, move on. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm I'm sorry. Who who would want to go first? Unless you guys want me to go first. You go first, so we can figure out exactly what you intended. <laughs> okay, I will go first. I chose Alcatraz Island mm. in San Francisco Bay. Yes, okay. I, I ironically I chose an island, but it was a smaller island to to the mm-hmm. islands of it's okay, Hawaii. It's not a state. Let's move on. <laughs> yes, it's not a state. I think it's a good idea. It's it could be a state of being easily protected. That's true. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it could. Yeah, yeah. I guess it could, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Y'all are weird. <laughs> yeah, that, that, sibling thing. I'm that's sure. Just, that that's just how we roll, though. Here at the Fallout Roundtable, though, we're just weird. So anyway, anyway, I would. Why well, I chose Alcatraz Island. One, it's an island in the middle of the bay that's all surrounded by sharks and probably probably at this point it'd be mutant sharks, two headed sharks, really big sharks. Um San Fran there there's a reason why the Alcatraz prison on Alcatraz Island what no one escaped from it. There's a bunch of mm. great <laughs> Didn't those just, two guys escape and they proved it like a few years ago? Yeah, they swam out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just two guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's just and two makes people. Shift raft. We, we <laughs> it's just two of them. Just, but just I'm sure they could How many? I mean, it was only two. I'm sure they couldn't do that with like mutant sharks. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I feel like those giant two headed sharks out there, yeah, never happen again. I thought. All depends. Maybe the shark doesn't care about you. You know, Isn't there can... like a fan theory about the sharks on Fallout? Nobody's actually seen them alive, but they yeah, see them like washed, just, up, like, on washed up on shore. Yeah. Yeah. I would be scared to see a shark in the Fallout world. I would. I'd be scared well, to I see would... a shark in any. I would imagine they'd be bigger than what they we've actually seen. That's what a I lot like bigger. Giant, <laughs> giant, size, yeah, big, maybe? giant sharks. Yeah. I mean, well, any, kids, anyway, looking at the, the Google Maps, you know, <laughs> an Alcatraz Island in the middle of San Francisco, in the middle of San Francisco Bay. So, how would you set up your settlement? I mean, um, okay, so, so it's got sharks around it, but is that going to stop, you know, yeah, raiders? raiders? Mm. Well, 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 my, raiders my may not swim, they then, might bring a ship. They my, really my might thing bring was, they might be singing pirate shanties on their way there. <laughs> Boy, hey, listen, Raiders approach I, I singing knew... sea shanties. I'd let them in. I would totally. It's like, come on in, guys. Let's have a party. Let you bring the rum. <laughs> Make sure you sing all the time. There, there, there's a lore roundtable lore of me talking about pirates for for lore. ever. Lore now. Yeah. Lore he sings okay. shanties. He talks about that. that he he randomly yeah. just brings up shanties all the time. So I'm just assuming. You know, just uh, yeah, I know. So I like, do. Wrong game. <laughs> and, I think he's I got a pre. A question. I think he's watched Black Sails a few many times. You know, That's he is going to have his pirates. Damn it! And they're going to live in Alcatraz. Yes. Yes. With their there's giant a, oh, shark there's... protectors. <laughs> so your yeah. um, settlement's going to be like pirate themed. It, it can be. Uh, you I can was actually be really more cool towards a, a pirate fort. I think it was pretty cool. He's just gonna I run mean, around. He's like gonna run around fort. the island all by himself, going "Arr!" Alcatraz Arr! pirates. Now, all I can <laughs> see is Johnny Depp when he was left alone on the island. He was trying to find the rum. No more rum. No Why more rum. rum <laughs> see, I got my pirates in. Yes. <laughs> Now we're talking about pirates. Put me on an island by myself. I'm gonna be. Are you gonna call it? Are you gonna keep calling it Alcatraz? Or are you gonna rename it? I I would probably keep it as Alcatraz, or or I would probably name it like a pirate name, like like Dead Man's Keep or whatever. Okay, that's you should name it Tortuga. No, I, I wouldn't want to do that. I like Dead because, Man's Keep be, because. Because I would use the building, the main prison building, as as like the barracks and the headquarters. Then I would use the grounds around it to find, well, mostly like the gardens around or the rose terrace. If if you haven't if you haven't noticed by this, I I'm looking on the Google Maps right now, looking at the <laughs> island. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. uh, if, if you can tell. I, I would I would probably use one of the gardens or the memorial gardens or or one of the terraces to plant all the food and stuff because it's not a very big island. I don't think it would carry that many people. Um, I would um, then I would probably rule it like as a fort or whatever against other people. My pirate fort out in the middle of nowhere. Out in the middle I don't know. Of San if you, if you did it 
you know, the Rick Grimes style, the way they did it in Walking Dead, like every I, person's I little room would be their cell. Mm. You pack all yeah. the people in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, because Alcatraz ha- has a lot of cells in it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to think more. Smaller cells than any other prison in the United States. Probably. But no, still. they are. Uh, no, I, mean, no, I thought if you're I thought living in a wasteland, you're probably happy to have your own space, even if it is small. I, I thought I thought safe. the Alcatraz of the Rockies had smaller. I, I can't remember the actual name. Alcatraz but of the Rockies. That that, that yeah. lost me. <laughs> there's a prison in Col- there's a high maximum security prison right now in Colorado. And they call it the Alcatraz of the Rockies because no one's escaped there. It's like all concrete. Everything's concrete. It houses the worst of the worst people ever. It kind of disturbs me that you know this. Yeah. Are you get, planning a new place to live? Yeah. No. <laughs> we don't need you to commit any crimes now. <laughs> no, it's more it's more like I, I go down rabbit holes like I did last week, but that's a totally different story for a totally Th- that's different fair. <laughs> that's a lot of digging. Yeah, yeah, it it went so deep that I'm like I I'm like, well, how did I get here? But <laughs> I I made it I made it there, and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. You made so it. So anyway, there. yeah. Let's see. So who wants to go next? I can go. You can go. Go, Jackson. Go. Cheyenne Mountain. Ooh. I would pick five. Cheyenne Mountain because it's fortified. It's an entire mountain and uh it's got one major entrance and one major exit and if you were to block that off with a bunch of auto turrets and things like that eh, it'd be kind of hard to get it in and out of not to mention it's pretty self-sustained it's got its own kitchens it's got uh multiple vaults inside uh, and it can take a nuclear blast Ooh. yeah that'd be perfect <laughs> it's also full of food yeah it would yeah and yeah it's got Probably. its i mean it's completely self-sustained I think it's actually probably too. the most legitimate like place to go during a nuclear blast than oh, anywhere else sure. in the United is States. Is that is that also where they suppose yeah, Stargate? Stargate. Yes. Yeah, okay. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Whew. They can do it with Stargate in there. Why not? Mm-hmm. It's got an entire mountain of casing. Mm-hmm. Not to mention mm-hmm. it's not really actually the mountain that goes down. <laughs> this is more underground. The mountain just covers everything. Yeah, but yeah, all all of them better. It's just, I mean, if you were to look at uh, pictures of Cheyenne Mountain, you look on the inside, you'll see that there's like a vault door that's probably about I don't know, ten to eight feet thick, and yeah. it's about I don't know, probably about fifteen foot tall. 15, 16 foot tall, so like a semi truck could actually drive into this, you know, vault door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it, it's quite le- like legit, like super vault. Like there's, it's got its own railway system on the inside. It travels an uh, um, un- undisclosed distance. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Cheyenne Mountain's got a lot of elements to it that uh, you would have. N- You'd be very surprised by. It. I'm sure there's many other elements of Cheyenne Mountain that obviously are not discussed. That would be even more juicy to find, <laughs> like an Area 51 type deal. I'm sure. Uh, well, there's a lot of research. I'm sure it goes on there. Yeah. There's resorts. Oh out yeah. There too. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures right now. Yeah, I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. Yep, and it's easily fortified. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. It could be defended by a few hundred people. You wouldn't really yeah. have to worry about airborne issues. Because you're no. probably deep enough in the ground. Everything in there, like I said, it's a legitimate vault. Mm-hmm. You can just lock everybody up. And it's got its own, like, it's completely self-sustained. It's got its and own all food the sources and everything that you else. you have and everything. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's perfect. perfect for technology because I assume sure. the temperatures are perfect right. year-round. I mean, because they have to make sure that that NORAD runs, so you know yep. they're gonna. That's they're gonna make sure yes, that everything is sustainable in case of any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I think he wins. We're all done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a really he good won. one. He, he won. Everybody go home now. He definitely <laughs> won. <laughs> I did kind of think of that, but I was like, eh, I'm just sticking with, with mine. That, so. that just seems too easy. No, <laughs> it's not. But I mean, it's it's too smart. You didn't think of it. Genius. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought, of, I, I thought Alcatraz was better. It's a smart choice. I mean, above well, ground, I stuck with mine just because I really liked it. Windows but... that have bars in them as opposed to being hermetically sealed. No, right. I don't think Alcatraz is better. I mean, you're still going to get some radiation in your little brain. I can think of a lot of rust. Yeah. 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 A lot. <laughs> Especially what? You know, uh, Cheyenne what? Mountain <laughs> also reminds me of uh, what we know as White Springs Bunker. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm yeah. sure there's a version of Modus in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the government actually did put a actual vault in, um, in Greenbrier. Yeah, Greenbrier. Thank you. Yeah, they did. Yeah, and it's that still technically intent. used for storage, but I think they only for store. Storage. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at one point, thing, it was a for, to protect you know. the president. So it was supposed to house Congress. I thought. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Congress. Um, Congress, it was the House there. Congress, the but they now they I, that's not the plan anymore, and so they do tours. No, they now. Use, yeah, usually when they do that stuff, because they have like six or seven other places. I'm sure right. they have a lot more than that, of, and they just mix it up. But the mountains make sense because you've got all that landmass above you to even make Take it even bombs. safer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Direct yep. hits. I mean, mm -hmm. Appalachia is a perfect area if you think about it. Well, it's so close to D.C., which is why I think they chose that. And it's also very isolated. It's like yeah. got its own isolated communities. Right. That's why Appalachia actually has a lot of it, its own speech patterns and stuff. Right. Well, yeah, because all the because you have the mountains are so mountainous. It's not easy oh, yeah. to travel around. There's a lot of pockets. Like I've actually met some that are Irish irish and french and you could tell in their family like if you talk to an older member of the family you can you can hear the french and the irish come out it's yeah. kind of weird but yeah. really cool at the same time it's a neat linguistics thing like i have right. a oh yeah who was um like a linguistics minor and she was telling me all about the fact that like the more isolated a place is and the longer it's established the more you get like your own unique like vocal dialects yeah yeah exactly that's so cool like it for me, it's very common to say over yonder. But when I went down and visited my cousin in Tennessee one summer, I said that to him. They're like, What the hell did you just say to me? I said, oh, I'm really? telling you, it's over there. I said, I used to could, <laughs> but I might could again. <laughs> and they always thought it was funny because they loved my accent. I'm like, I don't have an accent, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, you don't sound like you have much of an accent, but I guess I'm a Californian. I don't have an accent. I mean, Tennesseans. <laughs> I feel like have a little more of a oh they definitely have an accent country accent there than, a, than someone from Ohio yeah hmm. we get the Midwest accent yep <laughs> yep <laughs> fifteen years in Chicago 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 I had a friend her family was from Chicago and every time she say her dad's name it always cracks me up she so get. I just talked to my dad on the phone. He's just dad, so yeah. happy. I'm like, what'd you say? Yep. <laughs> one more time. Yeah. Run, by, run that by me one more time. <laughs> dad. dad. <laughs> yeah. Is he alive? And people or not? from Cleveland are like that too. Yeah. Is your dad dead? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh okay. my gosh. So who wants to go next? Actually, let's let's go with the break first. Okay, cool. And and then and then we'll finish it all off. So we'll be right back after this message. Apparently, yeah, yeah. After this message, ever wanted to be a content creator but had no clue where to begin? Come join me as I sit down with content creators that have already faced the challenges you're up against, as they discuss the tips and tricks that help them be successful. Here on The Content Creator's Guide, available wherever podcasts can be found. Engage. Engage. Welcome back. We are back on the other side. Uh, well, there are a million places, but we can only choose one. 
How how who would want to go next? I we had Jaxus and myself. Mm-hmm. Whoever you want. How about Dude. you, my sister? My own flesh and blood. Okay. Uh so I've given this a lot of thought. And I decided to go with what I know. So um I chose Spartan Stadium here in East Lansing, Michigan. Um, because of many reasons. Uh they're not as good as Jaxus's. is. But, you know, we do what we can. But uh, mostly I chose it because it's really well protected just in general. Uh, During my freshman orientation, I was told a story about how the basketball team one year was doing really, really well. So a whole bunch of college students decided to try to storm the stadium, the football stadium, not the basketball stadium, but the football stadium, even though it was the basketball team who was doing well. But anyway... A whole bunch of college students tried to storm Spartan Stadium and couldn't get in. So um, the the fencing and everything is really impressive to just like keep everybody out. So that was a really big plus for me. See that or they're just stupid. That's a possibility. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. There's that. (laughs) Um, There is. It's very easy, I'm sure, to, like, electrify the fences and everything to make it even more Mm. challenging to get in. Cars are insulated. Hmm? Cars are insulated. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. You know, lots of things to think through, but uh, there is... uh, (laughs) (laughs) Man, why you got poking holes in my idea? (laughs) He's just poking holes poking holes left and right now. The um, there's other reasons, not just because it's a good fortress. There's a a river nearby, so um, the Red Cedar River is not good for much because it is contaminated with bacteria. But I'm sure you could use it for some type of hydroelectric power. So that was a big thing. Also, since Michigan State started out as an agricultural college, uh, the school really prides themselves on having a real grass football field. So it's real grass; it's not turf. So that could easily be repurposed to do some sort of substance farming and agriculture right on the football field. So that was another big draw for me for this location with all of like the locker rooms and different like uh, restaurant, not like the food stands around the outside in the concourse. I thought that would make very good places for people to stay and to like store supplies. Also, nearby the agricultural building, they have, like, a vault full of seeds that they, like, plant every year. They're old seeds, but they, like, they still grow and everything. So I thought that'd be a good place to, like, get resources from. So there's a lot of good things about this location. Sounds like you did your Name it. (laughs) What was it? I said, it sounds like you did your research. And then he said, what would you name it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and I would, vaults are handy <laughs> yes absolutely um i would name it the woodshed because you got to keep chopping <laughs> i like it i thought that was quite creative yeah i thought it was good all right well instead of giving people choices it is now your turn dot go for it well mine's more for fun so I'm a big fan of the Nuka World DLC on Fallout 4, so I'm probably going to go that route. Um, here in Ohio, we're known as the roller coaster capital of the world. Yep. Thank oh, you to Cedar to Point. Cedar po- oh, I know where you're. Are thinking. you going to Cedar Point? I'm going to Cedar Island. Point in Sandusky, <laughs> Ohio. It's right off the, um, like, it's in Lake Erie, literally. Yeah. It's in that would peninsula. be where the largest wood uh, roller coaster is, right? Is that no, the that's Kings um, Island. Yeah, it was Kings Island. That's oh. Kings Island and down in Cincinnati. Did, At least did it they was. still have the beast. They still have the beast, yeah. The beast. Oh, and Son of Beast. Son of Beast is the one they have down. I think it was Son of Beast, yeah, because I never got the right oh, dad. Really that made me like, so I sad. Really like the Son of Beast. Okay, so I went to Kings Island. I grew <laughs> I literally grew up in Kings Island. Because I mean I grew up in Indiana, like Oh yeah. Just like nobody ever heard of it, town. And well, if you're in, if you're into high school basketball, you've heard of it. But just outside of Indy, um, so literally, it took us like two hours to get to Kings Island. So we were there all the time. And uh, I rode the beast the first year that it was built. Oh, I think beats a hell out of you. 
<laughs> yeah, they've changed the carts like several times yeah, to different and ones. And you still just, you get knocked around so bad. That's on one of the reasons system. why they took Son of Beast down because it had the first inverted. It was the uh-huh. first, it was the uh, first wooden inverted wooden with an inverted was, yeah. loop. Well, they took yeah. the loop out and it sucked from what yeah. I heard. And people are still complaining. Fun, it was a fun little roller coaster. So what would you do to the stuff? place to make it where it would be sustainable for, as a yeah. location? Okay. Yeah. Back to Cedar, Cedar Point. Point. Yeah. It's Back in a, the other it's side in, of the state. <laughs> yeah. The other side. The other um, side. Cedar Point is located on a, a peninsula in the la- in Lake Erie. So, I mean, it's constantly getting beat down with the weather and everything, but somehow they're able to keep these rides up. Oh, right. It completely amazes me. It, and then I also have a really nice hotel right next to the park on this peninsula. And I mean, it's a uh, what is it, Rikers? No, what is it called? No, no, I don't remember what it's called. But it's, it's really a really nice. well known hotel. It's real and it's huge and it's gorgeous. So that'd be where I would put the actual settlement, yeah, and then the sense. park itself would be used for like whatever that is needed. Yeah, it would make sense for like trading and-, and like there's two ways to get on in onto the peninsula. Of course, there'd be that would be easy because one could be I think one's technically a bridge to the peninsula and that could be taken out easily. So you got the other road, which you can easily lock down and keep guard of the whole island or the peninsula. Oh, I mean, sure. and you're not very far from other peninsulas either, but it's just far enough, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's totally. I, I mean, I've been there, but I just didn't pay much attention. Yeah, it is absolutely on a peninsula, and it's huge. It's like I think it's like twenty five yeah. acres. It, it might be huge. bigger than that, really. Yeah, it's just like this. It takes look, more than a day to get through everything. Oh, it's like three hundred acres. I'm way off. <laughs> yeah, but you, it, it's... you've got like two. It looks like two bridges. Yeah, so yeah. You just blow a couple of them up. <laughs> Just blow a couple of them up. It, it'll be just fine. Always fine. Hotel. <laughs> Hotel Breakers, is that it? Breakers, that's what it is. For some reason, yeah. I was thinking Rikers. But, I mean, and Close. there's plenty of buildings. There's a, a there like, they a have a harbor for boats and such. You can go camping. There's a whole campground. Oh, yeah. They have all kinds of goodies. Yeah. Like, you could use a, they have a big ass parking lot, like right as you get onto the peninsula mm-hmm. after the bridges. That could be like great for trading. Like, traders yeah. could come in, you could set up their trades. Use it like a flea market kind of yeah. environment. Yeah, yeah, just set up a huge tent area. Of course, you would have plenty of metal thanks to the roller coasters no and kidding. rides. All kind there's, of, we don't um, need those no more. Pretty much. Yeah, we don't. It looks like there's a lot of water. I mean, you're surrounded by water anyway, but there's a lot of water on the peninsula too. I believe. Yeah, there's also a lighthouse. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, from my understanding, if I remember correctly, it's a working lighthouse still too. Mm -hmm. Not surprised on the Great Lakes. I mean, they have a lot of them around there. But I mean, it it'd be perfect. I think. Just for that. It, I mean, the worst part would be dealing with weather, I think, other yeah. than raiders. Yeah, especially in the winter, it would woof. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. They say there's at least two or three families that actually live on there mm. that are, like, related to the the company or something. Then they're basically the care- the ultimate caretakers of the whole area. Wow. Probably ancestors. But I wouldn't want to live out there order. with all that lake effect and wind. And- I wouldn't want to live up in that area, period, because I wouldn't want to deal with the lake effect. No. I'm happy in southern Ohio. What I hated about Chicago. <laughs> oh, my God. It was awful. <laughs> Terrible. But that's pretty fun, though. It'd be a pretty fun. And like you said, you've got tons of resources. I mean, you'd be pretty set there. Oh, yeah. All and right. Canada ain't too far. Uh, eh? <laughs> well... <laughs> I guess that leaves you, Sassy. I guess yep. it does. You're last. I am last, but not least. Um. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Before, before, what would you name it? Oh, what, oh. what are you gonna name your Cedar Point settlement? No, Cedar I Point would... settlement. <laughs> I like Hotel Breakers. I might call it the Breakers. Ooh, I like that too. The Breakers. It makes sense. Got to be like a little intimidating. That... 
the that, breaker. That makes sense. The breaker. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. I like it. Ooh, should we declare like what faction would be our settlement? Like, are we going to be raiders or are we going to be like whatever? I mean, I oh, mean, oh. my pirate fort is raider. That makes sense. <laughs> Brotherhood of Steel, Cheyenne Mountain. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> What about yeah, you? Emma? What's your what's your settlement faction? Oh, excellent question. You know, I was kind of debating, but I was thinking more of like Minutemen. Oh yeah, I like it. That and who, who are your breakers? That's a great question. Um, I would say proud. I don't know. I wouldn't say. I was going to say Voltec, but then at the same time, like, nah, I'd probably be like a mix of raiders and just normal settlers. I figured just settlers because do you think raiders are actually going to put up with the weather and do all that work? No, they're lazy <laughs> assholes. So yeah, you're right. It's just settlers. <laughs> like yeah, they, they just want the easy life. I don't think they're going to work that hard. <laughs> not unless they took it over from somebody else who already had done. And they're not much on trading either. So yeah, yeah. No, they just want to take it all. <laughs> all right, sassy. So what you got? Okay, so it's not going to be any big surprise that we are going back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in good old Indianapolis, Indiana, home of the Indy Gearheads. And as we talked about before, Indy Gearheads. Oh, come on. Yes, you did. <laughs> not really any kind of set faction. Uh, if you want to get a, a clear idea on what the, the Indy Gearheads are like, Think back to Fallout 4 to the... Um... Actually, wasn't that your faction that you created? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. the faction. What episode was that in? The ones that y'all loved, huh? What episode was that one in? Oh, like, what's the number? Uh, Do you remember the number? 20-something. Uh, I don't remember the number. Hold it was 20-something. <laughs> well, listeners, yeah, if you want to know what she's talking about when it comes to her faction, go surf through the episodes. Yeah, in the 20s. Yeah. Mid-20s, I it, think. It should say... It, it, I, I remember the title. It was, we created our own factions. Yeah. I mean, if we really could. Those are some great that. factions, but, you know. Yeah, we did have some good stuff. So, but they're kind of um, fashioned after, um, there's fallout locations. If you want to give a quick synopsis of your uh, create a faction, go for it. Well... So think back to Fallout 4 and think back to the Adam Katz garage, right? All the guys who were like with their power armor and, you know, with the, everybody who had the slickest power armor and who was like, yo, yo, cat, go, you know, and who was like the, like the hottest, coolest, you know, this is the indie gearheads only. It's all about their rides because they're going to race. daddy -o a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, say, I guess they can say daddy -o a lot, but I hadn't really thought about, you know, what kind hey of... Hey there, daddy -o. <laughs> But they're all about their drag racing, their their car racing, who's got the the coolest car, who's got the fastest car, and all they're interested mm -hmm. in is working on their cars and making them better and getting parts for their cars. They don't give a crap about everybody else in the wasteland. They'll, they'll get along with most factions for, just for the fact that they need to be able to get more car parts. parts. Yeah. <laughs> they got to trade for oh, parts. Oh, yeah. Gosh. They're not interested in like going out and stealing them because it takes way too much time away from them as far as, you Home know, in their hair being able to looking yeah, at <laughs> engine parts up their hair and, and then yeah, going out and yeah. shining up their, shining up their cars. Um, yeah, it's somewhere in the 20s, but I can't see it yet. Uh, showcasing our factions, episode 24. There you go. Da -da -da -da. Um, there it is. So, oh. Indie Gearheads at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. If you look at a map, so if, if you've never been to the lovely um, big speedway in Indianapolis, this is a this is a thing. Uh, the month of May is given over to racing in Indianapolis. Every weekend, you can go out and watch uh, time trials. You can watch qualifications. You can watch all kinds of fun stuff. You can see, you can watch um, pit races. So you can see, like, who has the fastest pit crew, all kinds of cool stuff. All during the month of You can go out there every day and just watch them racing, just practicing, doing practice laps and stuff like that. And then the big event is Memorial Day. They have the race, like, the Sunday before. So... 
They also do NASCAR and things like that. But I grew up on IndyCar. We didn't get into all the other racing until later on as an adult. So the Brickyard uh, 400. Yeah, Brickyard 400 and all the F1 and they've got dirt tracks and everything else. They've got all kinds of tracks. My uh, dad would be in heaven there. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a pretty good time. I've been a couple times. Um, one of these days, I got to take my kids because they they don't know it. I've They've actually got to visit TV, the but... Daytona track, and yeah. I it, it surprised I, I me how it. that slope is. You can't the bank. you can barely walk on it, right? Because you'll slide right off of it. It's crazy. Uh, Indy's not banked like that. Okay, not, well, not, not that much. Yeah, I, no, I showed him pictures of up. it, and I bought him yeah. a shirt from Daytona, and he was like, he was excited that I got to see it. He's like, I always wanted to see that in person. Right. I said, it's crazy. Well, they've got a museum in the infield, everything, and I back in the day, the infield was the snake pit. Like all the people think of like, oh gosh, probably not as bad as like. um Woodstock or something, but like literally, people would camp out in the infield, and there would be all kinds of crazy partying, and everybody oh, drunk and look, oh, you know, like. And they no, people all still that do out. that. Yeah, no, people not, still not do like it. they did, not like they did, because they cleaned all not, that. Out. Maybe, maybe not in in Indy. Not but in the infield. They have working bathrooms now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not in the infield because they have a golf course through there. They've got several racetracks through there. Uh, they've got a museum in there. There's all kinds of stuff in there. So that is really for this, cool for the settlement because you have the grandstands built up. That kind of creates like your settlement walls, and you can of course fortify that more if you need to. But you've got walls around the whole track, and you have entrances at certain points that you can either block off or leave a couple open, and they all go under the grandstands uh, to go like under the track to come into. You have. Um, gasoline alley which is where all the garages are all the buildings that they use to house Ooh. the cars and work on the cars and all the pit basically where all the pit stuff is um so you can use all those buildings to either house your people but likely they're going to use them as garages because you've got a whole infield of space that where they can build their their homes they can use the huge tower with the offices in it or whatever they can use the boxes they could live in those. Um, the The infield where the golf course is is perfect for putting your crops in. You're going to have all kinds of places to grow food because they're basically going to be self-sufficient. They'll trade a little bit, but they're mostly just dependent on themselves because, you know, they're just doing their own thing. They'll have uh, all the water, all, that in, all the uh, water holes <laughs> for the golf course. They're just mm -hmm. going to purify those and use those for their drinking water and they're just gonna try and be as self-sufficient as possible uh, they just they don't really have a lot of they don't want to put a lot of time and, and effort into having to procure things that they can just have because they hmm. would rather spend their time working on their cars and racing it would be run by like I said before, uh, the guy who has the fastest car is obviously the smartest dude. So he's going to be in charge and they're all going to listen to him because obviously he knows what's up because he's got the best car. So <laughs> he's, he's the so, so you want the actual track part open so they yeah. can race. Heck yeah. Or, at least, or, at, least, or at least one of the straightaways. Yes, at least one of the straightaways. <laughs> because if nothing else, they can do drag racing. But if they can do full on racing, is that where they race wearing that. a dress? Yes. Sure. Okay. They can. Why not? <laughs> sure. I hadn't really thought about what to call it. I'm assuming that since the letters are probably still be up there, they'll probably still call it, you know, the Speedway or something along those lines. Um, they're probably not going to be too fussed about what they would call it. And they'll probably be perfectly fine with calling it the Speedway. Uh, somebody might tackle a little sign up there that says Home of the Gearheads or something. But, you know, it's probably just going to be stuck with, because honestly, it's always been the Speedway. <laughs> and it will always be the Speedway. The whole town around it is called Speedway, so why not? Uh-huh. So that's mine. Well, cool. That is cool. Do we have any questions, concerns, anything? Yeah. Nope. No, I thought it was I think, pretty cool. 
I think personally, I'm moving to Jax's settlement. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I gave it some uh, thought, right? And my initial thought for mine was Minutemen. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, well, actually, um, where Spartan Stadium is, like Michigan State is a really like research focused college. So oh, I have yeah. a feeling it'd be more like home to an institute settlement. Okay. Not going to lie. Ooh. Interesting. So you actually would probably have a lot of more of experimental type like you're going to be the one who has the perfect apple remember that from fallout 3 oh my gosh yes. where did the perfect apple oh. come from that's going to be her well because right. she's got access to the seed vault right exactly. with all the original food so Ooh. you know she doesn't have to deal with irradiated stuff interesting right <laughs> so she's going to have all uh-huh. the perfect apples and perfect corn and all that so yeah, exactly that makes sense maybe a golden apple we don't know <laughs> I mean, she said she had old seeds in in the vault. So exactly, like the botanical garden, beautiful. I'm sure all of that would have gotten irradiated and completely destroyed, but we still have the seed vault, right? And you may keep the botanical garden just because you know research purposes. And I'm sure the institute likes their beautiful things. Mm-hmm. If you have enough room to keep it, probably exactly. And MSU is one of the biggest colleges ever in the u.s so like (laughs) we've got the space yeah you do that's pretty cool i like it she likes it too (laughs) we get a vote from pepster so uh do we have any other places concerns before we wrap it up for the night or the day or whenever this comes out i can i I think the dog's got an idea but yeah, the dog's got an idea, yeah. but we don't understand. He's 16 years old and yelling at everyone. <laughs> He's just being cranky. Exactly. That was me at 16. <laughs> you earned it, buddy. Go for it. <laughs> so here's where we wrap it up. R- wrap it up for this episode of the Fallout Roundtable. It, it's been a pleasure. Nice to meet you, I Emma can't... and Dot. Nice to meet yes. you guys, Meta. too. Do you guys nice have any you. social media stuff that you would like to share before we take Anything off? Anything you guys want to plug? Oh, um, I do uh, live streaming and I also do some like random stuff on Facebook and YouTube. And I think I post a little bit on Twitter too. Uh, my, my user, my game name is, um, I pixel dot I P I X E L. Um, I do a lot of fallout stuff pretty much on my stuff. You got, I've got, on? I've got things in the work, but nothing, nothing as of this moment. Yeah. Well, anyway, like I said, this, this has been the Fallout Roundtable. I, I've i been Maverick Stone. We got Jax's sassy lady with normal crew. And then we got our very special guests, my flesh and blood, Emma, and our returning, first ever returning guest, Dot. Everyone, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye to the Bye people. Bye to the people. Bye, Bye peoples. <laughs> Everyone, goodbye. Good night. This podcast is part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club, a program designed to help all podcasts reach their full potential. For information about joining the Robots Radio Rocket Club, check out robotsradio.net.